The leaders of the G20 member states are descending on Australia on the eve of this year's summit, with divisions between the political heavyweights looking wider than ever. RT's correspondent Yegor Piskanov takes a look at the challenges that lie ahead. There's no doubt the latest G20 summit is taking place in the times of high tensions and increased Cold War era rhetoric often fueled by hysteria and groundless accusations. And the Australian press is no exception here. Just take a look at some of the uh, local newspapers that we've picked up for you. We've got President Putin in a Navy uniform on the front page, the hammer and the sickle, Russian military uh, vessels and headlines like threat of a crude attack and all of this is caused by four Russian military ships which have arrived to the neutral waters off the coast of Australia for the duration of the summit just like uh, vessels from other countries navies including that of the United States but if this is the press the Australian Prime Minister raised eyebrows both here and abroad by threatening to shirt front the Russian leader look I'm going to uh, shirt front Mr Putin uh, you bet you are. Uh, you bet I am. Uh, many officials in Russia and even in the West have been questioning how diplomatic such a statement could be, while here in Brisbane, one of the local shops even started selling T-shirts with uh, Vladimir Putin's face on them and the words shirt front, with the owner saying that this way she hopes the world would humor the Australian Prime Minister's uh, threats, adding that this is a peace-loving, civilized country. The Australian authorities, however, earlier threatened not to invite the Russian leader to the summit altogether, but uh, reportedly were quickly cooled off by their American, European and Japanese partners who feared that without Russia, some other major players would also not uh, come to Brisbane, including its uh, partners from BRICS like Brazil, China and India. Vladimir Putin is expected to arrive to Brisbane late on Friday and besides taking part in the summit in general, he's also expected to hold separate meetings with the British Prime Minister, with the French President and will be bringing you all the latest details from the G20 summit in Brisbane. Well, the Russian president has landed in Australia for the summit. Indeed, we can see the, uh, the recent pictures here of him uh, arriving. Uh, before heading out to the high-profile gathering, though, Vladimir Putin shared his thoughts on the G20. And he said that the event is a great place for world leaders to draw up roadmaps for future cooperation, but suggested that a major flaw is that the decisions there are not mandatory. At one G20 summit, a decision was made to enhance the role of developing economies in the IMF. U.S. Congress blocked that decision, full stop. So much for the decisions. Putin also insisted that the Western sanctions against Russia trample on the norms of international trade and end up hurting both sides since the global economy in the modern world is interconnected. And the final message from the Russian president was let bygones be bygones and don't hamper diplomacy. And Australian financial journalist Michael Pascoe says that Russia will be playing one of the leading roles at this summit. G20 is primarily an economic meeting. It's not a human rights meeting. It's not meant to be an international relations meeting. It's about trying to get the global economy functioning more effectively. Russia is an important global economy. Um, you wouldn't be having a G20 meeting without a major player. The, the emphasis of this meeting is on trying to lift global economic growth. The target is to try to get countries to commit to an extra 2% growth on what they otherwise would achieve. Therefore, every country is going to be uh, in focus.